All right, next up, why don't we keep working with composables? In this video, I will show you a new example that makes use of, of course, the Composition API as well as Reactivity. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I'll set up a basic example here. What is your favorite food? And then we'll have a simple input. Now, of course, I wanna track the user's answer. So I will add vModel and we'll call it food. And then I'll set that up as a reactive property. So I can say let food equals a ref, and that will default to an empty string. Okay, well, of course, if we switch to the browser, I will open up View DevTools, here's our component, and yeah, notice as I type into it, we keep track of it. Okay, but maybe we also wanna take this a step further and save the user's input to local storage. That way, if they leave and come back or accidentally refresh the page, they don't lose everything they've written. And this is actually very common for things like forums, where you might potentially write a long reply, and if something happens, if your internet goes out, uh, you lose all of your input. Let's see if we can prevent that. And as always, I will show you this in two steps. First, we will do it inline, and then second, we will extract it to a composable. Now, your first thought might be, well, let's listen for when the user types into this input, and when they do, write to local storage. So there is an input event we could use. I could say, when the user types into it, let's call a function write. All right, so we could define that here, write. Now, if you're familiar with the local storage API, I could say a set item, we'll call it food, and I'll make it equal to the value for this ref. So food.value. And yeah, that should work. Just keep in mind, in real life, we should throttle this. Uh, at the moment, we are calling this write function for every keystroke, but it's probably not necessary. Maybe you call it once every few seconds or something like that. Okay, but anyways, just an example. If I bring up the application tab, I will click on storage and then down to our current site. Okay, and of course we don't have anything in local storage. Let's see if we can fix that. Pizza, and there we go. So now, even if I refresh the page, of course the input is cleared, but we do remember that the user typed pizza into that input. So now, how can we remember it on page load? We basically wanna say, okay, when the page loads, check into local storage, and if you have something for this input, then set it as the default value. Okay, well maybe we could do something like local storage.get item for food. And let's see if that works. Come back, have a look, and there we go. It works. But if we go to application, I can right click here and delete it. What happens if we refresh and there is nothing in local storage? Then it's blank, we type into it, everything seems to be working. Refresh and we've remembered. But now let's say I wanna do this for multiple inputs. So I could say, I don't know, um, how old are you? And this will be V model for age. All right, let's set that up, see how it might work. We now have one for age, where we get a key called age from local storage. Next, the write function can't be so generic. We're gonna need a key as well as a value to write to. That way I can substitute these. Okay, so now when we type into this input, we could write to food the value of food. All right, and then the same thing here for age. All right, let's give that one a shot. So we'll say here, pizza, maybe you're 12 years old. We give it a refresh and that has been saved. And once again, if we go into local storage, sure enough, we are tracking that. Let's do my age, 37, docos, you get the idea. Everything is working here. Okay, but it is a little bit messy. But then there's so much more we need to deal with. Things like uh, serialization. What if you were writing an object or an array to local storage? Uh, we should also set up maybe a watcher. So what if the value of food changes outside of this input? Well, do we also write it to local storage? Let's give it a shot. Let's say set timeout, and we'll say after two seconds, I'm gonna set the food value equal to changed. Okay, well, when we do that, it would be nice if we also update local storage in the process. But right now, if I give it a refresh, one, two, we check local storage, and of course, that's not changing anything here. Okay, well, one way we can solve this is instead of listening for an input event, let's just watch for when the value of food changes. So if we take that approach, I get rid of all of this, 
and same thing down here. And now to set up a watcher, we're gonna import watch from view. Or if you're using the options API, you can just add a watch object directly to that object. So I'm going to watch food and when it changes, I'll have the value here, the new value. Why don't we then write to local storage? So write to food, the given value. All right, let's see if that works. So we come back, I will change food to once again pizza, and now that's working as well. But also notice we have this timeout here where we change it to changed. So give it a refresh and let's see if that works. One, two, and everything's working now. All right, and that's a better approach in my mind. But yeah, once again, we'd have to set up a watcher for everything. So watch age and then write to local storage. So you can see something as simple as remembering basic input data, yeah, it gets kind of annoying to write. So instead, I think this is a perfect use case for extracting a reusable composable. Okay, so open up the sidebar. I will add a new composable. I'm gonna call it use storage. And as we've learned, I'll hide the sidebar. We should export a function with that same name. That will return an object that we can receive from our component. All right, so let's switch back to home view. We now know that we're going to import use storage from our composable. And then ideally, if I get rid of all of this, yeah, I wanna say something like, all right, I wanna use storage for food. And then I will catch that into this variable. Yeah, ideally, that's all I need to do here. And as you can imagine, this will look into local storage. It will try to find something for the key food. If it does, it returns it, and maybe it should also return it as a ref. That way we can instantly use it within our input. Okay, so let's keep it very simple for now, get rid of all of that, and uh, if we try it, of course, nothing is gonna happen because use storage is blank. So let's write a little code before trying this out. We're going to accept a key, and we've learned that we can run local storage.getItem for key, now, if there is anything in local storage for that key, it of course returns the value, otherwise it returns null. So why don't we save this to a variable like stored value, whatever is in local storage. But then ultimately I want to return a ref to the user. So uh, I could say let value equal ref, import that, stored value, and then ultimately return this value to the user. All right, so if we switch back, we now know that this food variable is at the very least reactive, which means if we add vModel to it, we can keep track of what the user types in. So open up view dev tools, here's our home view. Right now, food is null, we type into it, and yeah, we are tracking that, which is great. Okay, the next step is to take what the user types and also write it to local storage. So let's switch back. And we learned that we could add a watcher. So I will import watch from view. Remember, this is how the composition API works. We import the APIs that we require. So let's watch that value. And when it changes, I want to write to local storage. Okay, let's switch back and find our write function that we wrote earlier. I'll cut that out and bring it, how about right down here? But this time, write doesn't need the key and value. We already have it. So let's get rid of that. The key was passed in when we call the function and the value is our ref here. So just keep in mind when you have a ref, you always gotta tack on dot value, which makes this property name a little weird, <laughs> val dot value. Maybe we can think of a better name later. Uh, but nonetheless, I think this should work. All right, so think about it, let's go through this. At the very top, I say, all right, I wanna use storage for food. So immediately it looks in local storage to see if we have anything for it. And if we do, we wrap it in a ref. And in fact, if we don't, we also wrap it in a ref, but it's just set to null. Then we keep an eye on that model. And if it changes, we instantly call this write function that writes the value back to local storage. All right, so let's give this a shot now. I'll go into application. It looks like my local storage is clear. I will type pizza into it. And now we're up and running. So have a look, we are keeping food in sync, which means if I were to change it here to tacos, well, that change should also trigger a write to local storage. So back to application, 
and now notice that's been updated. All right, pretty cool. But now a few edge cases, like what if we empty this out? Well, now we have food equal to nothing. So what we could do is say, uh, look for the value. If it's an empty string, then in that case, maybe you want to call local storage.remove item key. Otherwise we can set it or we can check for null, whatever you want. All right, so now if we once again, give it a shot, pizza, there it is. But if we empty it out, then we clear it entirely. And maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. What else? Um, what about setting default values? So for example, maybe I wanna say the default value for this, if it's not in local storage, will be salad. All right, let's see if we can get that to work. So now, our signature now accepts a default value, and it looks like we'll have to tweak this a little bit. So let's say, all right, well, if there's a stored value already, then maybe that's the one we want to return. So I could bring this up and say, okay, well, if that's the case, then overwrite value equal to a ref for the stored value. Otherwise, we'll set value equal to a ref for the default value. And then, well, we would also need to write to local storage because it doesn't yet exist there. So we create our ref and then instantly save it to storage. So I could call write. All right, let's see if that works. And it looks like it did, just so we can see it. Uh, live though, let's delete it and then manually refresh the page. And there we go, the default value is salad. So we saved it and we also wrote to local storage. But if we change it to pizza, well now we already have something in storage. So when we refresh the page, uh, we should ignore that default value. Or this is a great example of something where maybe we should make it configurable. When you provide this default, should that override whatever's in local storage or should it not? And that's the sort of thing that could maybe be part of a configuration object that you provide, but we're not gonna worry about that. All right, so like I said, there's other serialization things we might want to consider. What if you're writing an array to storage or an object? In that case, you'd wanna use things like uh, json.stringify or json.parse. Uh, but for basic examples like this, we were able to take all of that code and reduce it to a simple composable. So now if we bring back that age example, how old are you age? Well, now if we wanna track this, all I have to do is say, let age equals use storage and our key is age and we'll have no default values in this case. All right, come back and there they are. Ooh, age is being set to undefined. Yes, because value by default should be null. You don't have to give it to us. Okay, so let's empty those out, give it one more shot. And, oh, another mistake. What have I done wrong here? Uh, value is null. So that's null, so we run this, we write uh, value equals null, or we might need to check both because I don't, want to make this a boolean so something like that i don't know we might want to come back to that but nonetheless i think that would fix it so we're just handling the use cases where we should clear it from storage give it a refresh and there we go we don't have any default values so we don't see anything here but as we type into it we track it there we go give it a refresh and we've remembered it clear them out switch back and this time let's provide defaults tacos 10 years old. Now, this refreshes instantly because of feet. But yeah, when the page loads, we immediately store those in local storage. And then they're rendered on the screen. And yet again, we can always track it and update it on the fly. Okay, so that's enough for this tiny example. Uh, just keep in mind, if you implement this on your own, um, you should take this a little further. You need to handle serialization and a few edge cases. Now, a quick little bit of cleanup. We could just say write like this. And then what else can we do to clean this up? Uh, we have a function write. Let's also set up one to read and that will simply wrap this call here. Okay, so I can say stored value equals read from storage. If we have anything there, then let's create a ref, watch it for changes. And when it does change, let's write to local storage. Okay, what else? Um, yeah, for serialization, if you're dealing with objects and arrays or uh, things like that, you'd probably wanna do something like json.stringify. So just take whatever the data is and stringify it before you put it into local storage. Then when you fetch it, you could do a json parse out of local storage. And then finally, I think this is enough. 
Um, finally, if you're going to track an object, so if you're going to, if I switch back, if you also have use storage object, and that would be something like this, one, one, you know, any kind of nested object, if you want to keep track for any of those properties changing, you would need to set up a deep watcher. So we're saying don't just listen for if the object is completely overwritten, check to see if any of the properties in the object changes. When you're using the Watch API, you might want to set uh, deep to true. Uh, this can have a performance penalty if you're dealing with a, a gigantic object, uh, but for, for basic things, it won't be a problem. But yeah, deep just means go deep into that object and see if any of the child properties change. And if they do, I want to call this right function so that we can update local storage. And just to show that to you, if we open up storage, there we go. So we have saved this object. But now let's see what happens if we change it. So we'll say let object, and then we'll do a simple set timeout where I say um, after three seconds, then set the one property equal to changed. All right, so if we have a look here, that should work. One has been changed. And again, that's specifically because we're setting up a deep watcher here. So if I were to remove this, come back, let's clear all this out, give it a refresh, and notice after one, two, three, it's not gonna pick up on that change. It would only pick up if we uh, overwrite the object entirely, like this, object.value equals changed entirely, and then it would pick up on that. So come back, refresh, one, two, three, and there we go. That worked because we changed the value entirely. But yeah, if you instead want to listen for a change to a particular property, then we add deep true. And we turn it on because that could potentially be a costly, uh, a costly thing. But yeah, this is what we end up with. So now we've extracted a useful composable for working with local storage. And on your own, if you wanna use this on your own projects, you can, you'll just want to extend it a little more. And yeah, last thing, just keep in mind, if you are gonna use this in your own projects, well, if you're gonna work with things like SSR, server-side rendering, well, the server doesn't know what local storage is, so you would need to handle that as well. You'd need to create your own API that wraps it. Uh, but nonetheless, for basic browser stuff, I think this will be pretty useful.